In southern New Zealand, supersized and super fat, great white sharks dominate the waters. This shark ate like Kobayashi on the 4th of July. Lurking in the deep, they surface to gorge themselves and then retreat to the depths. I've never seen sharks eat like they do here. Now, a team of shark researchers are pioneering a groundbreaking theory. We're going to have to use some pretty fancy technology. If this works, it is an incredible advancement in science. That suggests these giant great white sharks was a big mama. are about to get even bigger. of enormous sharks have long followed fishermen back to shore, including legendary beasts like El Monstro and Prince Edward, who were reported to be close to 6,000 pounds. Today, the largest known living shark on the planet, Deep Blue, is believed to clock in at a staggering 4,800 pounds. But the sharks, sighted by locals in New Zealand, suggest they could get to be much heavier. A lot of stories from fishermen about these 25-foot, 6,000, 7,000-pound sharks. Are they fishermen's tails? That's what we want to find out. Now, one of Shark Week's bravest researchers... Let's do this. Oh, come on, boy! ...is on a quest. To find out once and for all how fat white sharks can get. I'm Tom the Blowfish Herd. I am the world's only heavy metal marine biologist. I do this! Yeah! Oh, yes, boy! It's so tricky to get an accurate weight of the shark in the water because so much has to be done on guesstimation. <laughs> so I've given a call to Lee Denecker. My name is Lee Denecker. I am a marine biologist, and I've been studying white sharks now for 14 years, focused predominantly in their diet. Tug of war, and I'm losing. There she is. Fish. Good to see you. I'm very glad you have joined me here. I know you've done loads of work with diet and ecology, and, and that's what we're looking at here. Have a look at this. When it comes to weighing sharks, you've got to get them on the scales, and that means taking them out of the water, either using very, very complicated lifting techniques or using a shark that's already died. Otherwise, we can only estimate. Nobody has got the actual weight of a shark in the water, and that's what we're looking to do. This is Deep Blue. 20 foot, give or take, and over 4,500 pounds. Big girl. Deep Blue. Is believed to be over 60 years old and the heaviest shark in the world today. However, experts can only estimate her weight using the Schaefer's equation, primarily used to weigh land animals. This formula uses length and girth to calculate the weight. For Deep Blue, experts had to approximate her measurements using nearby objects. But with more accurate measurements, she might be even larger. Big shark, big shark. Never quite seen something this big. Very obviously females. You can see their claspers there, as males would have. Quite easy to tell the difference. Got some mating scars on her over there, hey? Very, very round bellies. We know female great white sharks can get bigger than males. Female white sharks grow to be much larger than their male counterparts, about five to six foot longer. And being a bigger, heavier shark in the water makes you more dominating. So if we spot some sharks that rival the size of these sharks, these massive two-ton behemoths, they're going to be females. Mating scars are present, so could very easily be pregnant sharks. Nice. 
Now, current science would suggest that a shark that big would have to be pregnant, but we don't know. There's every possibility that we could get a five, 6,000-pound shark that isn't pregnant and is instead just a monster, monster creature. You reckon you could find sharks here at this site? I was here last year in New Zealand, on Stewart Island as we are, and we saw a whole host of sharks. We got a shark coming at the six. Watch out! Whoa. That was a big hit. Whoa, that gave me a real buff in the cage there. Sam, you got another shark coming up. Some big, some small, and they just had this really interesting interaction. Since then, it's really kind of bothered me, you know, the way that the islands are set up. We've got Antarctica, the Pacific, Australia's not so far away. I thought, oh, this, you know, this is a real mixing pot for great whites. There is no doubt that the odds are massively stacked against us here. This is going to be like winning the Sharky lottery but I am hopeful because we're in the right spot. We've got the right people and we're gonna give it 110%. With reports coming in from the locals and with the topography around here, I think this place could sustain a 6,000 pound shark. At dawn, Fish and Lee drop anchor off of Stewart Island, where fishermen have clocked dozens of large, beefy, great white sharks. Most studies on large sharks are done on their length. This is something that you can easily do from the side of the boat or sighting them in the water. It's much harder to figure out their weight because you have to get up close and personal to one of the world's biggest predators. To get accurate data, the team will line up measuring poles next to the sharks. I've got this pole which is marked out for length. Lee's got a smaller one that's going to go for girth. We're going to get those measurements. You're going to be getting the length estimate, and I'm getting the girth estimate. To measure more accurately, you'd have to get the shark out the water and kind of wrap a tape measure around it, which we can't do. But this pole can tell us the width and possibly the height of its midsection, which will help us to deduce the circumference. We could put that into Scafer's equation. We get an idea of just how big the animals are around here. Fish and Lee create a feeding lane positioning two cages 15 feet apart and will lure the sharks between the cages so they can take measurements as they pass by. We're not talking about measuring a goldfish in your kitchen. These could be 18, 20 foot long predatory animals. unleashes additional bait to lure the sharks between the cages. Come on. 
bait being thrashed around the water column. More sharks surface, but they still haven't found a fat one. A few sharks going on there. Coming out there, I seem to get a an extracurricular shower. <laughs> Got it in my beard. I think we were pooped on. I think that's the first time I've ever been pooped on by a shark. It wasn't seawater. <laughs> Great white sharks consume the entirety of their prey and unlike humans, do not chew it before it enters their stomach. Instead, the whole prey is broken down by green gastric acids that are strong enough to dissolve metal. The indigestible remains of the animal are then forced out of its cloaca, creating a green tornado cloud of fecal matter, known as coprolite. All of a sudden, the visibility just went, and there was this green cloud. Yeah. Happens. It's a strange day, but it's a good one. All right, Lee, I've tabulated a little bit of our data here from the dive. So let's see what we got weight wise. The first shark is a 14 foot male with a girth that is approximately five feet around. Approximately 2,300 pounds. Next up is a 15-foot male, topping in at 2,500 pounds. Do you see that girl that came through near the end? Yeah, she was pretty big. The final shark they measured was an 18-foot female. Schaefer's equation reckons this is 3,000 pounds. This shark was 18 foot long. Yeah. Should be much heavier, but looks skinny. Some of them look leaner. Mm-hmm, yes. Others. Especially that guy, remember that? He was like an arrow. Yeah. These are big, long sharks. But their girth is nowhere near as big as what we're looking for. Well, depending on the nutritional state, sharks can actually change in size. So they can expand and contract, depending on how much that shark is actually mm. consumed. So what if these sharks are moving into these New Zealand waters to feed? So maybe they've just arrived here from a long migration. Exactly. Each year, these white sharks travel 2,500 miles from Australia to New Zealand. These long migrations that the sharks go on are massively risky. They could be going through oceanic deserts for weeks on end. If there's very limited food, these migrations might be for mating or for finding a safe place to give birth. But to survive traveling these huge distances, they need to stockpile on food. And that is why we think they're here, to gorge on high-calorie food before making these big journeys. We need to break down exactly what these sharks are eating 